happy to introduce Mark Tursek, the president and CEO of the Nature Conservancy. Um, Mark, you are not a typical uh, uh, NGO CEO in the sense of how you got here, and um, you, know, you spent uh, uh, you know you've been at TNC for six years. You spent two years at Goldman Sachs and twenty or so years on Wall Street before that. I don't mean to go all Jerry Garcia on you, but what a long, strange trip it's been. Um, what is your? How did you get here? Well, um, thanks, everybody. It's nice to be here. I love uh, the opportunity to talk to you, uh, corporate sustainability officers. You're really heroes, in my view. And by the way, it's fun for me to follow all these other great panelists. This is really an impressive morning. Uh, quite inspiring, if you have my job, to hear these companies sticking their neck out to do important things, to hear from really good NGO people working hard to get their jobs done. It's not as easy as it looks. And to, see, and to have the chance to you know, clap for Phil Radford, who's stepping down from his great leadership role at Greenpeace. But um, so I salute all of you. Me, I feel fortunate. I still feel sort of like a newcomer in this field, but it's been six years. I worked at Goldman Sachs for 25 years, um, and I grew up in a city and was sort of a city guy. Only as a parent did I get very interested in nature. My wife and I made a real effort to get our kids exposed to the outdoors, partly to compensate for our own urban backgrounds, and we kind of fell in love with nature. By the way, I think that's significant. I think if you expose almost anybody to nature in a, like, a structured, meaningful way, they will become an environmentalist. And then as a business person, I always was one of those business people um, who thought business could be a force for good. Um, I don't think that's naive. I really believe yeah. that. So those two interests of mine came together. I almost quit Goldman Sachs in t uh, 2005. At the time, my boss was Hank Paulson. And when he learned what I wanted to do, he said, no, instead, stay at Goldman and build an environmental effort for Goldman Sachs. I, I was proud of what we did for a few years. Then the TNC job opened. Uh, I thought, hey, I'll apply for that job. It looked like a good fit for me. All of my friends, sort of smart people in the sector said, oh, Mark, they're never going to hire a guy from Goldman Sachs. But amazingly, I got the job, and it's really been a great six years, and it's been fun to be part of the environmental community. Really an honor, to be Well, before honest. we get to what you're, what's going on at TNC and this whole uh, area, what happened to the program that you built at Goldman after you left, Hank Paulson left? What happened to that? Is there well, any? I think it's still plugging along. Uh, I was at Goldman last week, because they, they had a good uh, conference on um, investments in green infrastructure. But when I started with Hank, our idea was let's not do anything that's philanthropic. And we did a little bit of that. But what we really wanted to do was show first Goldman Sachs business leaders that doing the right thing for the environment would also be good for their business. That was the idea. And I think we kind of pr made prove that case. And the notion was there would always be ups and downs on Wall Street. And I wanted this environmental effort to survive the next downturn. Now, the mother of all downturns came in 2008, but the effort did survive. And you know, today, all the good financial institutions have environmental efforts. They're all a little bit different, but I think they, they accumulate to be significant. Um, we're working with JP Morgan right now on an effort to um, help harness investment capital for investments in nature, uh, those kinds of things. So um, I think Goldman's efforts plugging away, and, and all of the, the major financial institutions, I think, have, have commendable efforts. They, they should be here. I, I, I gather they're not here today, but we should get them part of this crowd. What's your focus uh, in working with companies at TNC? First of all, uh, as you probably know, that TNC, along with EDF and WWF, were the, were the three companies that were, were seen as in, in the Green Biz NGO report that came out yesterday as the most uh, corporate friendly. Now, uh, a couple of corporate people I know said, I wish you hadn't called them that, yeah. uh, because that's, that may not you know, serve them well. Um, but uh, I guess the bottom line is that you were seen as playing well with others. Uh, but what is the focus of the work you are doing? Let me comment on your, your survey first. I mean, I think it is, it's a good thing to measure everything, right? If you want improvement, it's good to measure. I think with, and of course, I was happy that we were, in the, I would have felt very bad if we weren't well ranked on that survey. But I also think you need to be careful because um, none of the NGOs that are in that grouping, I think any of the groupings, are in it for the purpose of being highly ranked. We have to be careful. Like some of the companies that, the organizations that scored less well, they scored less well because they're doing their jobs very well. Rainforest Action Network or Greenpeace. I mean, I, I really admire those organizations. And I was happy that we scored well, but I don't want it to kind of go to our head or distort our motives. For TNC, life is relatively simple in one respect. We know what we're trying to do. Our mission is to save the lands and waters that life depends on. So we're in the conservation business. Historically, we've been extraordinarily successful, really, thanks to our generous supporters at raising lots of philanthropic money to protect nature. That's what we've done for more than 60 years. That's great, and we'll keep doing that. The problem with that model, or the shortcoming of that model, though, is we'll never raise enough philanthropic capital to like, really move the needle. 
plus some of the things that we want to save and protect aren't for sale. And so we still have that strategy, but then we have this second strategy where we want to show people how to use nature sustainably, how to guide business and government to do the right thing. So back to my Goldman Sachs you know, insight, I think in many, many cases, not every case, but in many cases, it makes sense for business to do the right thing broadly. In our field, that means invest in nature. So we're big on this notion of investing in green infrastructure, sometimes called natural capital. But I think green infrastructure is a better phrase because it's easier for business leaders or government people to understand what you're talking about. They invest in infrastructure all the time. Oftentimes, we believe, if you invest in green infrastructure rather than gray, or perhaps along with gray, you'll save money and you'll achieve all these extra co-benefits that make it a much better investment. So, so what do you mean when you say green infrastructure? So, you know, green Trees infrastructure. Would be the obvious yeah, yeah. Thing. So nature, I mean, it sounds obvious, but it's good to go through it. What does nature do for us? Well, it provides all these services, right? Clean air to breathe, uh, good food and fish to eat, um, um, protection from storms. Pollination, air, greater, yeah, soil all, erosion. All that stuff, yeah. right? A stable climate. And so, um, so na the Nature Conservancy wants to protect all of that stuff. We do it philanthropically, but now we have business and government on our side. And, and there are so many examples. I wrote a book about this. I'm probably not supposed to print it. No, it's totally. It's called uh, Nature's, Nature's Fortune. Fortune. Right. I never wrote a book before. I don't know what obviously you would think you of it. To, obviously, you don't know how to plug one. So <laughs> this, is f this, is, this is false modesty. Yeah. <laughs> no, in the book, in the book though, um, we lay out, example, I have a co-author, we lay out example after example in every area we can think of, ag, fisheries, forests, urban conservation, these win-win invest in nature approaches. Um, but there are a lot of them. I mean, off the top of my head right now, and I, I would really kind of challenge you corporate sustainability officers, if you're interested in this, I haven't come across a company yet that doesn't have a really significant opportunity. Like a, a few years back, I met the CEO of Swiss Re, so reinsurer, right? And so I made this pitch to him. He said, well, what could we do? So now with Swiss Re, we're trying to, TNC and Swiss Re, we're trying to put our climate science into their insurance pricing models. And I'm sure we'll get this right. I mean, it's, it's sort of complex in some ways, but not in its essence. The idea would be then companies or insured parties will be incentivized to protect their green infrastructure because that will lower their risk premiums because they'll be at less risk. And or if something's really vulnerable, Insurance will be too expensive, so it'll be, it'll, it will be able to be restored into an ecosystem. We'll get all the uh, environmental benefits we'd always want, but there'd also be that, that um, you know, economic savings. I, 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 this is great stuff, and I love the green infrastructure reframing of, of natural capital. They're both good terms, but I think from, from that perspective, we had a conversation here yesterday uh, about natural capital, and, and John Davies, uh, our, our uh, VP here at GreenBiz, said, you know, that's not the language that people speak in business. Um, and so let's port that over now to, nat to green infrastructure. Yeah. You know, if any of these you know, sustainability execs go to their CFO, and there's just always sort of the, the benchmark here, of can we make the CFO understand it and talk about green infrastructure, what's going to happen? And you're the banker. How do you make this case? It's, it's, it's a great question, and it's, it's really a, a promising area for environmental NGOs. So again, remember, we used to rely on philanthropic capital. It's very nice. We really need it. God bless our supporters. It's not, though, the best model, I think, because if someone, you know, TNC, we had a campaign saving the last great places. We did great stuff, but nice philanthropists would give us money, we'd go protect something, and there wasn't much accountability or follow-up afterwards. Contrast that to we work with Coca-Cola FEMSA in Latin America to invest in protecting their watersheds. That's the, the biggest Coke bottler in yeah, Latin America. Yeah, biggest Coke bottler across Latin America. A really good partner for us, the CMO, Carlos Salazar. He's a great guy. He's a... He's kind of the prototypical CEO. I don't, he's not really an environmentalist. I mean, he's got nothing against us. But he's trying to run his business. Obviously, it depends on water. So in contrast to the philanthropic money, he says, OK, what do I have to invest? How will you deploy it? What results will I get? What will the evidence be? Show me the cash flow model. And I think that back and forth makes us better, because then we say, whoa, we've got to take our science up to the next level so we can be more precise and helping him understand an investment of X, Y, or Z will result in these kinds of returns in water. And it makes us better environmentalists. So is that something that TNC does where you, a company can come and say, help us you know, calculate the, the business case, the R&D, the ROI of, of certain kinds of green infrastructure investments so that I can take it to my CFO? Yeah, we do. But by the way, I'm, I don't really want to go overboard. I'm only talking about TNC projects because they're the ones I know. These other NGOs here, each in their own way, are doing the same kind of work. 
But yes, we're now really investing a lot in science. We've always had a big science operation. We have like 600 scientists. But we're investing more in our science because we think to take this green infrastructure thing to the nth degree, we need more science. An example would be in New York City or New York State or in Columbia, places like that on the Gulf Coast. We're working with government officials on the notion of reducing risk from storms and sea level rise, right? So I think we've got something really meaningful here, but if those officials are going to rely on green infrastructure in contrast to gray, we better make sure we really know how to make it work and know with, to a really fine degree what it will do and what it won't do. And so there's more science work to do there. And another th thing that's cool about this is when we work with business on this, we get better. Like uh, Neil Hawkins was just here from Dow. He's one of our partners. We're doing a big green infrastructure project with them. But some of the stuff we're discovering, we, we would never have discovered it on our own. We're working on their plant in Freeport, Texas. We had no idea going into this that this, this was the case. But it turns out because the plant is growing and because there's local ozone issues, Dow is about to invest in a lot more scrubbers in their chimneys. It's hard for anybody to get excited about a scrubber. And then one of our, one of our scientists learned that from a Dow engineer and said, wait a second, planting trees should address that same issue. So now we're in front of the EPA, Dow engineers, TNC scientists, making the case that in lieu of those scrubbers, we'll do massive reforestation, and that will better address the local ozone pollution issues. And is the EPA buying in? Yeah, it's not quite done, but of course they like this idea. And so Dow will save money. In the local Freeport area, you'll have this massive reforestation effort, which will be great for the area. And then, because of the wind patterns, some of the reforestation can occur in Houston. Houston's a very nice city, but let's face it, it could use some more trees. So you, Dow saves money, we don't have scrubbers, and we have all these ecosystem yeah. benefits. Let's take a real quick question from Elaine from the audience. Um, yeah, so a lot of questions have to do with the metrics you're using um, and actually how you monetize uh, these green infrastructure projects and justification and how does the actual business benefit as a result? How does a company benefit from a green infrastructure investment or natural capital? So it's really the business case, the ROI. Do you sort of have those metrics? Uh, in, in I, you know, I would say they're in the work. So that's what's really good about the Dow project. We're trying to get those metrics really solid, and we're publishing all our stuff in peer-reviewed journals, which, by the way, that would be a tip to the corporate people here. Transparency is the best. We, we say all the time at TNC, we're, we're humble. We've never done this work before. We'll probably make mistakes. Our critics are our friends. If they bring those mistakes to our attention, and this disclosure, especially in, in the rough world of peer-reviewed journals is really good. Sometimes the metrics are easier. So water is relatively easier. So with uh, Coke, Pepsi, the beer companies, sugar cane growers, it's easier to measure, measure water than some other things. Um, with Swiss Re, I mentioned we have work to do, but I think it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, we're working with Rio Tinto in Mongolia and their big mine. Uh, we're working with Three Gorge Dam Company on dams. Uh, same kind of notion. Can mines be better, dams better? And as we go along, we'll disclose and we improve the metrics. Yeah. We do need more investment in science, but we're on that case. Well, I think humbleness is, is always a, an asset, but uh, too much humbleness is a liability. I think we need to get this story out and tell it uh, much, more, much more vigorously and boldly to these audiences. Did I mention that he wrote a book called Nature's Fortune? Please join me in thanking Mark Tursek. Thank you. <laughs>